a gentle peace for non-gentle times. An einigen Stellen verführt es zum Fluchen. Das ist immer sehr spannend, weil man keine Ahnung hat, was am Ende rauskommt. Und siehe da, es kommt ganz anders. Es ist ja Work in Progress, ganz buchstäblich. Es ist ja nicht nur so, dass du als Interpret nicht weißt, wie das klingt. Das weiß der Komponist eben dann irgendwie auch nicht. Und darin liegt eine sehr große Chance. I should serve, you know, the soloist. And he has this part and he has this idea that how, you know, the character especially, how it should be. And I think these are the moments I'm like, okay, let's try it. And really find, uh, you know, take the time to, to find that. You know, let's do it again. Let's experiment again. You know, and these are the moments I think it takes some patience. Over Zoom, you know, Igor and I and, and Bill, like we, we talked through the piece and, you know, we asked him questions, we play, you know, passages for him. and. I think that is, you know, it's, it's nice to work together. For, for about two weeks, I've been breaking my hands trying to play this. So I, so I actually learned the entire variation in quadruple tempo. Isn't it nice to have a piano concerto in, or any piece in 2022 that actually ends in a fat D major? Actually, yes, that's rare. Like we need that. Full, full Bernstein-like D major situation? Yes, and with the horns bells up, come on. Correct. Yes. Did I have, have I told you how this whole idea with Balkum came up? No. I played here in 2017, something mm -hmm. like that. I performed and the program was a program of ragtimes. And I completely screwed it up. Like, <laughs> completely. But then the gentleman who paid for this commission now, he was in the concert and he... And everybody was really, really enthusiastic about Bill's music. And, and so this idea came up that, that we should maybe ask, I could ask Bill to write something. Mm -hmm. And I asked him at first, I said, so how is the concerto going to be? And his only comment was, it's going to be a gentle piece for non-gentle times. Wow. That's what he, that's what he wrote me. Das ist natürlich ein großer Glücksfall, wenn ein Mäzen nach einem Konzert auf mich zukommt und sagt, pass mal auf, ich will unbedingt einen Kompositionsauftrag für ein neues Werk in Auftrag geben. Das finde ich wahnsinnig spannend und das ist, das ist schon ein Geschenk, wenn jemand wirklich das auch leidenschaftlich begleitet, gerade für die neue Musik. Wem möchte man einen Auftrag geben? Ist es ein junger Komponist, eine junge Komponistin? Wie passt der Komponist mit den Künstlern zusammen oder mit jetzt in diesem Fall mit dem Künstler zusammen? Und da war Igor Levit natürlich eine zentrale Stellschraube und er ist dann mit sich ins Gespräch gegangen und hat sich überlegt, wen hätte ich denn gerne? This is the first time a premiere a piano concerto. The second. It might actually be the first time. Yeah. 
This is huge. That I didn't know. Yeah, it's know. the first time. Yeah. yeah, it's exciting to commission piano concertos, but um, it's a kind of economic. It's a kind of economic insanity because you just you make it costs a lot. It mm. requires lots of organizing. It requires an actual orchestra to accept to perform it, which in itself requires lots of planning. Mm. You you need so many players to make it happen. Mm. And then in best case scenario, you play it two, three times and then you don't play it again because either the, the one who commissioned it doesn't have, you know, much time or other orchestras just don't do it or other sol soloists just don't do it. How do you work on pieces once you get them? and you don't know them, what do you do first? Well, of course, I try to understand how this whole piece comes from. Like the story. Oh, but you don't hear it. Do you hear when you... When, do you hear the music when you read the music? Oh, some of... some to some extent. Yes, internally. And I hum some tunes and then that's when I'm like... Hmm. Man guckt sich seine Stimme an, vielleicht schaut man auch mal in die Partitur und guckt, was da so steht, ob man jetzt alleine ist mit dem, was man spielt oder jemand mitspielt. Und der Rest äh, bleibt dann für die erste Probe. I actually love this excitement of doing a world premiere more than, you know, doing a piece that has been done over and over the ages, you know. I think that is, you know, even sometimes worse because we all have our very strong idea of how it should, should go, you know. But I think this one, even though we have our own idea, there's always some question marks. And I love that shade of question marks because in the questions, and there's no definite answer. It always, it's always that the process for me learning something new can be really draggy and really exhausting. And then after the first rehearsal, I thought, um, oh, that's fun. And it just felt good. And there was no, um, there were no bad feelings about it anymore. What about you? Oh, it's quite similar. I mean, the thing is, you know, that I've also done quite some new pieces. But I think yeah, with, with, with Bill's music, you know, I mean, I, I knew him from Michigan when I was studying, and I knew already. Oh, that's he... right, you studied there. Yes. So, but you, you, have you met him before? Yes, in Michigan. But you know, he was already sort of retiring. But he's this figure, like this. You know, oh, you actually met him? Yes, he was in school. I only heard some of the orchestral pieces, but I never actually conduct his pieces. So this is such a great opportunity, to be honest. Some people have anxieties about height, so... Do you? Yeah. Uh-oh, okay. Do you think Balcombe's concerto will, will stay? How, how much, uh, if, you, if you take the percentage, how much of, of, of any written repertoire really stayed? 10%, 15% of, of like everything that has ever been written? So if we look at the history, I would say no, it won't. But it will be performed occasionally, yes. Yeah, virtually speaking, yes. Give me any composer other than Beethoven and... Now it gets hard. We're, we're probably literally almost everything is performed. Give me one. But sort of Beethoven and also like, no, not everything, but almost everything is being performed here and there. But other than that, Ravel, but he wrote just... So just, yeah. yeah but those, yes. So it won't. But it will, I mean, it, it will stay, it will be performed 100%. It's too, it's too, um, it's gentle, it's like, it's enjoyable. Of course it's going to be performed. But yes. it won't be whatever core repertoire is. I think Bill is a, Balcom is a, an, an, an essential composer because he really created something which stays. 
100%. And so he is not one of many. Wenn ich ein Charakteristikum rausziehen sollte, dann ist es der Wille zur ständigen Neuerfindung. Ich finde, jedes Festival hat die Aufgabe, neue Kompositionen auch zu beauftragen und zu präsentieren. So wie ich das erlebt habe, ist der Heidelberger Frühling das absolute Anti-Status-Quo-Festival. Ja, jedes Jahr wird alles von Null begonnen. Das ist großartig, ist auch sehr anstrengend, aber es ist äh, großartig. Es ist einfach eine Art, Freude zu bereiten. Nicht nur für sich selbst, sondern eben auch für andere. Und das alleine sich freuen, ist eigentlich ziemlich langweilig. Ich denke schon, dass Freude auch mitgeteilt werden muss. Sonst ist es eigentlich keine echte Freude. Musik